for honor. Yeah. I really felt that God um, was called me to work with men or, or lads, kind of from 18 to 40. We actually discuss um, what's been going on in the news and actually what issues that raises for us as men. So um, this week we're looking at kind of suffering um, because of natural disasters and things that have been in the news. Um, so we just sit and we have a discuss and there's some scripture there that we look at as well. <laughs> the camping stuff um, actually came from a guy who He's quite spiritual, um, maybe he wouldn't call himself a Christian, and he said, I'd really like to go out into the wilderness and, you know, maybe chat about spiritual stuff and just be out in nature and in the open air and things. So it's, it's a normal camping trip, we've got fire and meat and man things, but then we've also got a, a kind of sacred space, an area that is different, that is away from the campsite, um, that is a holy area, if you like, really. die for friends and family, you know, the things that you live for. We wanted to create something uh, which was non-threatening, which wasn't seen as just a, the white man's faith, his re religion, and to be able to say that it's okay, it's fine to be a follower and a disciple of Christ without losing your cultural identity. Friday we had over a hundred people here celebrating Good Friday and all that it means to be a Christian. A hundred people coming to find out about the story of Easter. Eight different families have asked to have their children baptised in the playhouse because that's where they've come with their children and they recognise this is a church, they recognise this is church for them. Thank you Lord. On the second Sunday of the month we have a, a family worship where families are encouraged to come together to do something similar to Messy Church where they come and they do crafts and they sing together uh, and we're actually seeing now between 40 and 100 people come once a month to that event um, and finding it a real blessing to them. Hi, my name's Sam. Why don't you come and see my church? The analogy I would use um, when we are encouraging young people to use skateboards or BMXs or inline skates to worship would be, um, for example, liturgical dance. What we're talking about is someone using their sport, using something they enjoy, using their bodies, something they're very comfortable with using, and then focusing that towards God, either in, in, in the form of prayer or as an act of worship and saying, instead of landing this trick for the pleasure of doing it for me, I'm going to land it for the pleasure of you. So Michael's in the Mulpit meets in Valley Primary School, which is the primary school on the Mulpit Estate. We meet every Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, usually for about an hour. And um, all welcome is what it says on the sign and all do turn up. Teaching is probably what is uniquely different in that we will break into small groups and do stuff. We may play games, we may paint something together, we may collect things, we may have a quiz. We quite often um, share in small groups, say something about someone who was a good father to you. And then whoever's leading will gather that back together and, and bring it into the lesson. It always starts with people. It always starts with people's experience, whether their experience of what we're doing on the day or their stories, their story of their life, of their faith. And then we tie their story into the wider gospel story. So it's not someone from the front telling people what to think and believe. It's drawing out people's experiences and then relating those to the gospel. We had an opportunity recently to lead a, a pro surfers um, f funeral and led about a hundred surfers in a paddle out where you, you all paddle out back, out the back of the waves and form a circle together and then through 
flowers into the center of the circle and just cried out this professional surfer's name. And it was a very, very powerful um, experience. And then myself and Henry then paddled away from the circle with, with this guy's ashes. And we poured the, the ashes into the water. It's got to start where people are. We can't force it on them. We can't bring our acoustic guitars. We can't bring the hymns. We can't bring the Matt Ribbon songs. As much as we love those things, we've got to start where people are. And then we walk with them on that journey. One of the sessions we did, we did on uh, the friendship of God and we did an art installation uh, which had a kind of a built-in room with a front door and a doorbell that people could go inside and see um, lots of things around that you'd find in your house and in there ask questions about what would you say to God if he lived next door to you. So the closeness of God. The next one we did was God of the universe, how massive God is. So we got in a seven meter science dome, which had a 360 cinema in it that kind of showed the stars. And we had a science guy come in and talk to people about the universe. And we had um, installations about water and the elements and stuff like that to get people to think about the hugeness of God. And we had projections at the front that said, let there be light. And we had anywhere up to five, 600 people come through the church during that evening between, we actually opened between eight and three in the morning. We had one guy that came in recently who um, had a gimp mask on his head, um, zipped up at the front, and he walked in on his own to the front, got a kneeler cushion, put it down on the floor in front of the altar, knelt down and prayed for like three minutes or something. Then he zipped the mask off, took it off, put it next to him, continued to pray for another few minutes, and then basically just got up and walked out of the church. Amazing visual display to see, and I don't know what he, what he did, what he prayed, um, but he came in and he chose to kneel before the altar of God and, and you know, take his mask off before God and then walk out again. That's what we're here for.